Welcome back to another display tutorial. Today we are setting up a Case IH 2000 series planner and we're going to be walking through the display wizard. So one of the good things that we uh, released with the older 1200 series planners was the setup wizard. And this basically takes you step by step through on how to set up the planner, it takes you through every everything that you need to go through. So there's two different things here. The full setup is what we would initially go through if we're going to set up this planner. And then the daily operation is for when everything else gets uh, completed. So you'll see here, everything has green check marks except for GPS. That basically means that uh, GPS has not been set up for some reason. So if we go into daily operation, it'll give me a warning that I haven't met all the conditions. So I have to set up GPS before I can get to that. Daily operation is mainly for your minor setup. So we're going to go into the full setup and we're just going to go uh, straight down the line here. So uh, it just says before proceeding, uh, make sure that we have a current vehicle in the display setup. So we'll go back into the toolbox, go into display setup, and we do have large tractor in here since we're in a Steiger platform. So we'll go to next. Total number of row units, 16, okay. Do you intend to use GPS for your operation for mapping overlap control or auto guidance? We do. Do you intend to use the section control or AFS AccuRow clutch control? Uh, I'm just gonna select no for that. Do you intend to use prescriptions for product rate control? Uh, no, I do not. And you can set, select yes or no, it's just going to confirm at the end. Uh, do you intend to use as applied product information such as variety names, application rates, and chemical attributes? Uh, yes. Do you intend to use the container function to track product remaining in your seat hoppers or liquid tanks? Uh, container function would be like a virtual tracking system. So you would be able to put a container on your run screen and after the product gets to a certain level it will alert you uh, no I'm not gonna use this you can do that if you want do you intend to use split planner mapping uh, not in this case but we can if we want to do you intend to use a factory supplied fertilizer liquid system we'll select yes so from here we just need to create an operator or uh, make sure that the operator is selected and that the correct units are, are used. Make sure that you select USA if you're in North America. Um, if you're using a metric system, you can certainly do that as well, but all of your units as far as seed and fertilizer are going to be a little bit off. Select the crop type. Uh, select our grower farm and field, which will save all the data too. Uh, GPS location, so I do have a quad track uh, that it's set up on so I don't really have to do anything here my connection type is can if I was using a third-party GPS receiver something like an aftermarket I could use uh, RS-232 for that all that's good uh, the forward offset obviously that's grayed out that's at the fixed axle point which in this case would be the front axle to the GPS receiver Right offset would be right or left. Typically this is centered and you'll have a zero offset on this. And then from the height offset, we actually have to measure that. So in this case, we would take a, a tape out there, measure from the bottom of the receiver to the ground. And this could be influenced by many things, including the tire size, tire pressure, uh, the vehicle itself, how it's configured, whether it's tracks or whether it's not tracks. So we do need to make sure that this is set up correctly. Uh, GPS is offline right now, so I'm going to go ahead and skip it. So that's a good thing about the display. It'll allow you to skip that if you want to set up this planner inside the, the shed or something. Uh, verify that the number of rows per section is complete and correct. And it is. It's just pulling all that information off of the ECU. Uh, row width, we're going to leave that at 30. Bar distance, this would be from the fixed axle to the application point. We would need to, again, take a tape measure out there 
and make sure that we measure this because this is going to affect the sections uh, turning off, shutting on, uh, mapping in general is going to be affected by this so this is extremely important. Uh, one thing I didn't mention as you go through this, if you're ever stumped on something you can always hit the help and it will give you information on what each of these settings or configurations means and give you a little bit of explanation there. It's really nice. Uh, so from here we got implement, you got bulk fill set to yes, markers no, and then active granular chemical no. Remember we had a liquid product. And then we have bulk fill lights if we have that, down force control whether it's hydraulic or pneumatic or whether we don't have anything installed at all. And then wing down force control if we have that. Uh, cleaner and closer, whether we have that, yes or no. And then work condition. Remember, it's just like any other system we have for application. We have to have a work condition assigned to a product in order to map that out. Uh, the number of cells per dish. You can see, you can find this information from a uh, planner operating guide, uh, productivity guide that may be available. It'll give you the number of cells per dish for each crop type. Uh, liquid cal value, that's again going to be from your flow meter. And then the liquid product delay, uh, this is the point or the number of seconds at which uh, the system tells uh, the flow meter or controller that we need, let's say, two or three gallons applied to a certain area. It's that point or delay at which it's being told and it actually happens. Uh, bulk fill default rate, there is different numbers that you can use for this. Uh, the big thing here is we need enough air that we can push that seed to the row unit. So you may have to adjust this. Vacuum rate for the uh, seed meter. Uh, intentional overlap, if we want to overlap a row or if we have a planter swath offset, and that's, uh, you know, if the planters offset towards the right or left we put that value in as well. Uh, enter a value for the installed downforce system so we can kind of customize this if we want put in a different value we want to leave that at 50 or we can set the default layer or default values in here as well. Um, typically you have to kind of do a little bit of research based on your soil type um, another factor is the weight of the row unit itself. How much downforce is that going to apply by the time we have the weight of the row unit sitting on the ground? So this is something that you may have to talk to an agronomist or maybe talk to your dealership on. Uh, cleaner mode. So if we, we can set that to uh, float, down, lift, or full lift. So this, if this is available, we'll select cleaner mode and we'll set the pressure for the cleaner down or lift modes. Uh, using wheel speed instead of GPS speed for our planter, we do want to make sure we have a calibrated wheel source on the planter, but we can use GPS speed if we need to do that. Uh, the calibrations for the frame and liquid we'll go over in another video. So it's just giving us a warning that all calibrations have to be performed before we can actually go out and plant. So we are not doing split planter mapping here, so we're just going to assign a product. I'm just going to create a new product. And this would be a new hybrid. Just put a hybrid number in here. And then corn crop would be what I would use. And you can see it highlights this. If this was a split planter map, uh, it would actually highlight only half the planter. Uh, default rate. Let's go with 35,000 seeds per acre. And you notice right there that um, it does give you does give you a default rate already, or uh, gives you a default as thousands of seeds per acre already. So if you put in 35,000, it's going to give you an error. So something to keep in mind when you have prescriptions as well. Uh, minimum application rate and maximum.
And then liquid product, uh, we'll just leave that as standard there. Put in our default. Let's go with five gallons per acre. Two gallons minimum. And then we have a delta application rate, which would be a increment that we would use to increase or decrease that level. If we want additional products, we can certainly do that. We do have seven mapping layers that we can control. And that takes us through the full setup. Uh, like I said, there's some things that I skipped out of here. So if you ever uh, need any additional information, you can certainly look at the operator's manual. But that's the, the basic settings for the full display, uh, full wizard setup for the 2000 series Case IH planters. Thank you.